Hi, this is another video walkthrough for your homework. This time I am showing the homework number three. In homework number three, you have two different data set. One is mod data, the other one is the crime rate data. So I'm only going to be demonstrating uh, exercises related to the mod data. I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to leave this crime rate related exercises uh, in your good hand. As long as you can successfully complete all the six exercises prior to this question, you shouldn't have any problem here, okay? So let's take a look at the first question. Please draw a histogram using x1 variable, and but the condition is please use the bin number of 20. Bin number of 20. Uh, prior, we, we didn't really um, try to change number of bins, right? So here, I'm exclusively, uh, explicitly asking you to use bin's number of 20. So let's take a look. Um, here is all the data set. It looks like we have, yeah, it looks like we have 1,000 observations for each variable here. Uh, let's summarize this one. Insert. I go all charts. Here is a histogram. Okay, here is a histogram. So we never, we never took this route, but this is, uh, this is convenient when you want to jump directly from a variable to the histogram without making a frequency distribution first. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you. Um, this is it, but we want to make sure that your bins are 20. Uh, the other one you may want to consider to fix is your label for the x-axis. This is not readable. I don't want to read if you look at something like this, okay? So let's let's fix those as we uh, continue to work on it. So how to change the number of bins? Uh, left, right click the axis label area. You will see the format axis here. And then as you can see, number of bins, okay? So change it to 20. You can either change number of bins or you can either change the uh, size of each bin, like, he like here. So if you change it to 20, it will automatically adjust the bin width to this size. So this is kind of convenient. Next one you want to do is to change the format of display. So um, I'm going to pick the number. If it's number, it automatically uses two decimal places in displaying the contents. So this makes me more want to read it. Okay, actually want to read it um, to want to know what is in this data set. Okay, if your data set is uh, not readable, uh, people won't read. Okay, so that is one thing you should consider. Uh, another thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this grid uh, because I don't like those grid. Okay, and then I want to get rid of the title. Okay, this is just the X1 summary. Okay, with that, I think we have completed the first step. Construct a upper bound and lower bound using three standard deviation. What fraction of the observations are outside of the boundaries? So I think we're going to spend a little bit more time here uh, to figure out this question. Um, it's asking us to construct a upper bound and lower bound first. So um, using three standard deviation. So it means we need to have mean first and then standard deviation second. And then we're using that information to construct the upper bound and lower bound. Uh, so let's work on that first. Okay, so for the convenience, I'm going to insert a lot of empty space here. So uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, let me. Oops. oops, it's not moving. What's going on? Anyway, main and standard deviation, I think. Yeah. Yeah, when I'm when I'm doing this screen recording, sometimes Excel behaves weird, weirdly. So, uh, come on. Average is A to A. Oops. And then standard deviation is S T D E V S A to A. Okay, and then you have upper and lower. So for your upper bound, it is average plus three multiply standard deviation. Lower bound is gonna be um, average minus three multiplied by a standard deviation. Okay, so why three? Because it is asking you to using three standard deviation to uh, construct an interval. Okay, that is why. Uh, what fraction of the observations are outside of the boundaries? Or you can do it hard way. Right, you can do it easier way. So let me show you 
uh, harder way first, okay, so that uh, you know um, in case you, you don't recall your formula, this is one thing you can do. So what we can do this time, you can do this time is to, you know, sort the variable x1 in ascending order, right? Ascending order, smallest to largest. Okay, smallest to largest. Let me show you one more time. Highlight a column, and then go to Home, Editing, Smallest to Largest. Okay, this shouldn't change. Okay, these contents may flash for a second, but the number-wise, it won't really change. Okay, so now you can, you can look at here. What is number of observations that is smaller than 73? You don't really see anything that is smaller than 73. Right? What is something that is bigger than 165? How many are bigger than 165? Press down your control key, uh, your downward arrow, 167. 167. Uh, what was our low upper bound? 165.08. 165.08. Okay, 165. There's only one that are outside of the boundaries. Right? There's only one outside of the boundaries. So you can say, one out of one thousand and you can do the calculation here okay what is another way uh what is the other way you can do that without you know taking all these sorting process um so another way you can do that here is you can use f function or f f if formula i'm going to show you now is lower is below, lower, right, is above, upper. So the idea here is you will flag each of these observations based on whether they are below the lower, lower boundaries or above the upper boundaries. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do that. If this guy is less than your lower bound, Okay, make sure you do F4 to absolute reference, flag it using 1, otherwise 0. Okay, so if, if this number is smaller than 73.39, it's going to flag it using 1, otherwise it's going to keep it 0. Okay, so for example, if I change it to 72, it will automatically change to 1. Okay, so... Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show you this formula. If I change this, all these values will be changing. So, okay. So here is uh, how to determine whether this is below the lower or not. And the same manner, we we also use we can also use the F formula to determine whether this guy is above upper boundary or not. If it is above the upper boundary, one. If it's not, zero. Okay, so if you think about that, logically, only one of those will return as one. There will be no possibility that both of them is going to be one. Okay, so that means we can create one more thing called outside. Okay, so the outside, this new variable is going to combine both of them. This is really, really clever treatment. Okay, the reason why I'm saying this is clever because you just need to take a look at D column. D column is going to tell you whether this observation is outside of the boundaries or not. Okay? So now uh, I think you can figure out what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click and it's going to fill automatically all the way to the bottom. But I think I forgot to do F4 here. Okay? F4 here. So now we're ready. And if you double click, if you double click, in fact, all of them are not outside of the boundaries. Only this guy right here, only this guy right here, displayed as one because it is actually uh, above the upper bound. Okay, so so how do you determine the fraction in this case? Fraction outside is actually going to be uh, sum of all the column of D and then 1,000. Right? Fractional side is uh, this small, 0.1%.
0.1%. So this is how you can complete step number two. Okay, step number two. Uh, for number three, please standardize all values in x1 variables. Okay, please standardize all values in x1 variable. Uh, using the standardized value to construct a histogram, please also use the bin number of 20. Okay, here is repetition, but you need to know how to do the standardization of x1 variable, meaning we need to find a z value for the x1. Okay, so for that, I'm going to squeeze this thing out a little bit. Um, standardized x1. Right, you know, um, you have formula you can do that, right? You, you, your formula says value minus your mean, right? And then divided by the standard deviation. So the difference is being measured in terms of number of standard deviation. That's basically what it says. Um, that's one way to do that, right? Of course, you need to do F4, F4. Another way to do that, let me show you another way just copying here, is using standardized formula, okay? x1 value, your average, again, absolute reference, standard deviation, absolute reference, okay? So it's going to show you exactly the same result. Just for fun, I'm going to do all of them, both of them. You see, the result is basically intact, uh, exactly the same. So again, you're going to draw a histogram on this standardized value. Let's go here. And you know what to do. You know what to do, right? Here, right click, format axis, and change number of bins to 20. Okay, and then also change the number format, display format. Okay, this is much easier to read. Um, in addition to those, I get rid of the title of the chart as well as the grid line. Okay, so now you can compare how do they look like. Do they look the same or not? Right, if same, why? If not the same, why? Right, so, so number four is asking the same way the number two. So construct a upper and lower limit with a three standard deviation and count how many are outside of the range. So you can you can repeat the same step here, you can repeat the same step, but I think here um, it should be much easier because once you standardized it, the mean, mean and the standard deviation becomes much easier after the standardization, okay? mean and SD. So mean for the standardized value will be, yeah, and then ST, DEV, S to F. Okay, so mean is basically zero. This means move decimal point 15 positions backward backward so it, it means it's 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 nearly zero okay you put 14 zero in front of two right and then you see the decimal point that's basically zero and for the standard deviation let me see oops yeah this is this is one this is one so uh, basically your upper bound your upper bound is three your lower bound is negative three, so it makes the it makes the calculation much easier in terms of the upper and lower bound, right? Once you standardized it, the upper and lower bound calculation becomes much easier. So we copy the same thing here. We we'll copy the same thing. You can do the exercise. Um, you can you can repeat F formula by yourself. Is this guy smaller than your lower bound negative three? If you're putting negative three directly, you don't have to do the absolute reference, okay? And then it's one, otherwise it's zero. If this value is larger than three, it's one, otherwise it's zero. You do sum. Okay, so let's double click. And you will see 
exactly the same result. You'll see the exactly the same result, right? So I, I think I, I'm asking you to reason through why you're seeing exactly the same result. Okay, so I will leave that to you. And then the last question is, please construct a box plot that compares all three variables. So uh, for that one, what I would recommend you to do is I would recommend you to download the data again because, uh, because your order may have changed, right? So uh, that may uh, have some impact on the outcome. Okay, so oops, I'm showing something else. So for that reason, what I'm going to do, okay, so this is original data. Uh, I'm going to highlight x1, 2, 3 here. And then I insert recommended charts. You go to box and whisker. You click OK. You click OK. So this is what you see here. Um, here, x-axis really doesn't have any meaning. Your title, I don't, I don't want to see the title. Also, get rid of the grid line. Grid line. Uh, maybe it's a good idea to add the legend because we want to see which color represents which variable. Okay. So this people want to read it, right? This is a clean and nice looking uh, box plot that people actually want to read it. Okay. This will conclude uh, first uh, big question. And if you're done with the one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't think you will have any problem with a one and two here in the next round. Okay, I'll leave that to you. Um, I will see you in next video. Thank you.